Today, in this episode, I'd like to focus more on the men's kimono and different parts of a kimono. So, first, let's look at the kimono itself. You can notice that there are two pieces of this kimono. This piece is called a naga juban. Now, naga juban is from the Japanese word nagai, meaning, la, uh, meaning long, and it's like an undershirt, if you like, in Western terms. This is an under kimono, which is placed first, and then a kimono is put on afterwards. You will notice with this uh, naga juban, there are two colors. Can you see here's the gray, and here is a different color. This part of the kimono is known as an eri, or collar. Now, these eris are based on a either sometimes polyester, but usually silk material, looking like this. This is what's called a haneri, and a haneri is sewn over the naga juban and forming a collar like this. And this collar is slightly exposed, like here, and then the kimono is placed about maybe a centimeter below it. Kimonos. As you see, I'm wearing a kimono. The kimonos, men's kimonos, come in many colors. Um, let me introduce you to a couple of colors. This is one of my favorite colors. I wear this at tea ceremonies. This is a beautiful light cream color with green um, padding. And again, great for um, tea ceremonies and also other formal occasions. You'll notice with a men's kimono, let me just put this in, hand goes through here and there's kind of like a, an artificial pocket. And often men keep their wallet or anything in this kind of pouch area. Also with a men's kimono, this part is sewn in. Women's kimono has like a, it's, it's not sewn in, so the air can go through. And also this part is a little bit longer. But this is how you can tell a men's kimono, which looks like that, from a women's kimono, which does not have this style here. So as I said, this is a fantastic kimono, one of my favorites, made of silk. Uh, Japanese for silk is uh, kinnu, so it's made of silk and all the best kimonos are actually made of silk. Another style that I have is a nice green style. And again, I use this for tea ceremonies, but also I use this for more formal occasions. And it's a beautiful kind of a foresty green, can be used in autumn or in spring, even in winter. If you notice these kimonos, let me have a look at my favorite one. Here is the front. and inside it's plain, similar to here. Here is the front and inside it's plain. On top of the kimono, you can wear a haori and then a haori is like a jacket, if you like. And a haori is very different to a kimono because outside looks like a normal kimono, but inside there is a beautiful pattern. Look at this one here. Isn't it amazing? Now, this haori is uh, obviously an ao, a blue haori. So it goes over the kimono like so. Put your hand in like this. You have a beautiful pattern at the back. And to tie it together, you use this. And this is what's called a haori himo. Himo meaning cord in Japanese. This is a very formal one with the little frills here. And for example, you can just go like this, go like this, set this frill like this, and there you have it. A less formal style, if you like, hanging like this, is a cord-based um, haori himo, which is just a series of beads attached by a little hook. Place one hook here, one hook here, and that keeps the haori um, in place instead of flapping about. I'd now like to introduce you to one of my favorite styles of kimonos, 
and that is an Amami Oshima smugi. Now, Amami Oshima kimonos look like this, or like this. So now I have two Amami Oshimas. One is the full kimono, which, let me show you, is this. So beautiful. And the other one is a Haori, which looks like this is the outside, and this is the inside. Amazing, yeah? What makes our mommy uh, Oshima uh, Smugi uh, so beautiful is the way it's designed. It actually takes a long time to make. The um, silk is actually mixed in with cotton. Um, so, oh, sorry, Amami Oshima is in Kagoshima, which is in the uh, southern part of Japan. It's a small island, uh, Shima uh, meaning island, uh, Amami uh, meaning a kind of plant or weed. And um, Amami Oshima Smugi is very, very special. Um, it's uh, silk mixed with cotton, and it creates a rough kind of texture, not a smooth kind of texture. This cotton fabric, uh, the actual reel of cotton, the thread rather of cotton, is then dyed. Um, it's dyed using iron in mud as well as plant extract. Creates a beautiful um, colouring, if you like, which is very unique to Amami Oshima. It is then taken out, dried, and then it is weaved. So usually people weave and then they dye. This is the actual thread that's dyed and then weaved. And the weaving process, maybe it takes maybe 30 or 40 processes to get this weave exact. Now this weave pattern is called a uh, turtle. Uh, this is a turtle pattern, which is a, a patented, a patent, patent <laughs> pattern in uh, Amami Oshima for uh, men's mugi, for men's uh, kimono. Um, there are also uh, larger ones, of course, um, but this is a nice, smaller, conservative one. Mami Oshima Smugi uh, kimonos take a few months to make and um, unfortunately this tradition is sadly dying out so hopefully the younger generation will still continue. Now let's have a look at this um, haori looking like this. This is how you put a haori on. And then you put this on this side like this and then you put these sleeves in and you put these sleeves in and there you have the haori. Now haoris need to be turned. So this is the collar or the eri. You turn the eri like this and then so this is slightly exposed if you look. So it's not collar up, it's kind of collar down if you like. And then I'm using the simple um, himmel um, and that goes in like so and there you have it. I am now wearing Oshima Smugi Haori. Other thing I want to highlight to you is the obi. And obis, I guess, tie the kimono together. There are two obis I want to show you today. This is a reversible obi that you can get. Light on one side, ash on the other. Or this is a very nice obi, one of my favorites. Beautiful designed, light silk with nice tassels. Obis are usually silk, but they can be polyester. Polyester obis don't sit as well, so I really recommend silk. The most basic of kimonos is the yukata. And the yukata is used usually, as I said, during summer season. And it's not silk, it's actually cotton. This is a yukata very thin same same design i guess as a kimono but very thin um, allows the air through here's a beautiful pattern that i got from mitsukoshi the back is quite simple and plain the, the you you put it on similar to how you wear a kimono however usually you don't put on a nagajuban um, if you put on a nagajuban and this then that makes it more of a summer kimono or a natsu kimono but if you just wear a t-shirt or something and then you wear this, this is like a yukata used for festivals. 
Now, I am wearing a Haori Himo, as you can see from this, and I'm wearing a, a kimono, and I'm wearing a Naga Juban, but I'm also wearing a Hakama. Now, a Hakama is a very, very formal piece of um, clothing for the kimono, and let me slowly get up so you can see it. This is a Hakama, and a Hakama is kind of like a kimono trouser, I guess you can call it. Now I'm going to stand up slowly so you can see the Hakama style. So here I go. So a hakama, let me up again, is placed right at the end of the process if you like. So you put on your, your uh, uh, naga juban, you put on your kimono, maybe you put on your haori as well, and then you put on your hakama. And it goes above the obi. This is an obi, I'll explain that in a minute, which I said talked about. Now hakamas are usually only worn for formal occasions and sometimes they're worn for events but usually it's formal occasions or when visiting a shrine for um, some special um, festival. Hakamas aren't so popular now in Japan uh, amongst men but you do see them from time to time. The final thing I want to talk about is footwear. Now usually for a tea ceremony or for indoor events, we wear this. This is a tabby. If you look at the tabby, the big toe goes in here and the other toes go in here. It's like a sock for indoors. It has a nice little um, uh, back area here. It's not so cushioned, but um, it does allow you to walk across the tatami floor with ease. Some people also wear these things. There are two styles of slippers in Japan for kimono. One is called a geta, one is called a zori. This is a zori. So a zori is usually made out of cork, a bit of leather at the back. Uh, this is a modern style um, zori and it can be used with the um, tabi like so. The other style of um, footwear which I don't have is a getta. And getta are wood, wooden based blocks, this thick. They are very heavy and cluck, 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 make a lot of noise. But again, you can wear it with a tabi like so. Usually if you are wearing a yukata, you will just wear this bare feet. Finally, I want to talk to you about how to hang up a kimono. This is a kimono hanger. It hangs like this and extends like this. After you wear a kimono or use a kimono, you usually hang it up to be aired out before you store it. So this is a plastic kimono hanger, but usually they are made out of um, either key, uh, wood or um, bamboo. Uh, but as I said, this one is plastic. The final note about storage is this. Kimonos are usually stored in paper booklets, if you like, or paper bags <laughs> like this, and then put in a cool place um, to stop moisturization. So that's all about kimonos. Now let me show you how to fold one.